Welcome to Secrets from the Saddle podcast. I'm Sylvie Dao, your host, fellow cyclist, bike club founder, cycling coach, bike race junkie, just truly super passionate about cycling. My journey with cycling started 20 years ago when I opened a spin studio, started a women's race team, and founded a women's only cycling club called Cycle Fit Chicks. I'm super thrilled to reveal all aspects that make the world of cycling operate. I'm so excited to be able to bring you interesting people from around the world, pro cyclists, recreational cyclists, coaches, event organizers, bike shop owners, everything and everyone you need to know or ever wondered about when it comes to cycling. I know you'll enjoy this episode. All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Secrets from Saddle All Things Cycling Podcast with your host, Sylvie in beautiful snowy Chelsea, Quebec. And we have Martin and Alex who are in nice sunny Dubai. And we've got Martin back um, just for as an update to see what he's been up to for the past year. And also before we get started, happy St. Patrick's Day. That's why I'm all in green. And <laughs> I pulled out all, all my, my green shirts and hats for, for the podcast today. So welcome back. Martin and Alex, how are you guys doing? Hi, really great. Thank you. <laughs> I'm looking forward. And it's been a great season with the racing and the riding, cycling. <laughs> I loved it. And Excellent. yeah. So I was scrolling through because I've been watching you. So we've been friends for a year. So if if you everybody wants to go back, the first podcast episode that we did together was episode 217, so 217. So if you want to go back to the very first one that we did together, um, that's where you want to go. But I was going back through your Instagram just to, you know, because that's where everybody's life saw compartmental carp compartmentalized these days as to what everybody's up to. But and I was noticing that you joined a new team. Yes, I'm currently now a member of Al Shafar Jumeirah cycling team. And I'm really happy to be in the team. I love it. It's great. And I've been it for almost a year now. So at the end of summer, I joined and I'm very proud to cycle with their jersey. And I really love that team. It's an amazing team. And it's what I was looking for. So I had a goal in mm -hmm. my previous season to get into the cycling club. And now here I am wearing the yellow jersey of <laughs> Al Shafar Jumeirah cycling team. It's always okay. yellow. It's always, always, always yellow. <laughs> I was like, wow, the yellow jersey. So tell me about this club. So is it a club or an, a race team? Or is it's, it both? It's a team. It's a team. Okay. And they're racing in the local races, the local championships. Uh, we have races which we call Al Salam. That's a championship for the locals. And my team was racing in there. They won both and lots of others. And it's a very strong team. We have quite a lot of cyclists. And I am one of two uh, kids in Shafar. I'm the youngest one in the team. That was my next question. Is your team made up of all, well, I wouldn't say all youngers, but there's a, a group of young cyclists like yourself, or is it all ages? You know, at the it's... moment, this team they they are mainly they're mainly adults, and that's the first year when they tried somebody from the kids, and there are not too many teams uh, who are actually having kids in there, mm -hmm. especially in this age because he is he's ten at the moment, and because of the regulations, he is mm -hmm. running in the under ten. Uh, age group and so there are only a couple of teams basically and uh, so Al Shafar team were keen to try something new and they invited him and it was like a, a very great start of the year right yeah I enjoyed it and 
I'm looking forward to more years with the team. Oh, excellent. I'm planning wow. to stay in it. You got yeah. many years. That's for sure. So Alex, did you get the invite too? Uh... <laughs> 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 so I was appointed uh, by Martin as his SMM manager. Oh, <laughs> as well as the as well as the the coach helper and the driver and uh, the adult name. the adult supervisor. Yeah. It's like, well, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I can say I can say that if last year when we were going for the rides, uh, it was like. Okay, Martin, catch up. Let's do it. Let's go. Then <laughs> after one year, so he was training the entire season very, very heavily, and he was training in the summer as well, yeah. quite a lot. Um, so right now he is dropping me. <laughs> oh boy! And we go. I mean, Alex, I'm not going to have to start training with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not cycling that much like him, but when right. we go on track and there is a local team, or if when he's his team passing by, you know, these uh, adults who are racing, they're professionals, and they're passing by, he's jumping on their wheel, and I will normally like, all right, oh, no. <laughs> see you later, because I cannot handle that. Yeah, but I'm very proud of that at that moment, so that's really cool, isn't it? Yeah. So, so Martin, tell me, okay, now tell me how much racing you've been doing and so training. About, yep, about the races and the trainings. Let's start off with the races. All right, let's um, start with the races. We've done right. way more races than last season, which is very good. I've done over 10, I think. Oh, wow. So maybe 15. Around 15 races this season. That's uh, very good. And I was going in the Falcon Demand series, which is my main I race. saw that. And I actually have the medal over here. I saw my, that. My Let's see group. it. <gasps> oh, yeah. Here. Look, I'll just wave to myself. That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. So I was the overall winner. Mm -hmm. over For the, the series? Uh, not exactly for the whole series, but for U10. Okay. I was the winner um, because few days, few like half a month uh, with the regulations and I was put in U10, mm -hmm. but I'm racing with U12 because I am the oldest and the strongest in my group. So we always race with the other team, Abu Dhabi Cycling Club. We race with them. And it's very nice because I'm racing with older kids. Yeah. And it's always, they sometimes beat me, sometimes I beat them, but we respect each other and we have lots of fun on the races. And we enjoy that. That's why we keep going and coming back to the races. So is this like a weekly race series that you participate in, like for 15 weeks? Or is it just... Is it all different races like throughout the year? Like, how does your season work in Dubai since it's it's cycle for the cycle race all the time? So for the Falcon, it's every month. For oh, okay. Races. There are six races for basically the whole season. There every month there is a Falcon Demand race, wow. and fortunately there are no races in Dubai still. And we're always going to Abu Dhabi for all the races. Oh, that's that's fifty kilometers away, right? Hundred we kilometers. Last time, hundred kilometers. I'm the driver. Hundred kilometers. <laughs> and we had a very hot September. In September, we've got uh, six races in four weeks' time, I think. <gasps> so we were literally going to Abu Dhabi, staying in the hotel over over the weekend because there were a couple of weekends when there were like one race on Saturday, another race on Sunday. And uh, yeah, overall, so it was it was very hot, hot month. Right wow. now, the races are over. We don't see anything else coming up in the calendar. Maybe some random one or two races mm -hmm. will come before they, before they really heat wave <laughs> come over here because it's coming up the heat is this now. your winter though 
it the is winter finished the winter is over so our season <laughs> like our my season winter is in winter yeah so yeah so it starts normally in september and ends sometime in april i would say okay so but like the colder is, season like the colder yes yeah, because in the summer so in may it's gonna start hitting 40 something degrees outside and uh, june july august it's it's up to 50 plus humidity you can't really do the races right okay so is that when you don't have races but you have races like no. yeah we have races it. during the winter time because it's yeah. the weather our winter right. is like summer for the temperature yeah i so i remember seeing some people some friends posts well on instagram where they're up at like four or five in the morning riding yeah in dubai yeah. like just that's what we're gonna do in the in the summer so we go at four o'clock tomorrow morning uh, we are going not because of the heat just because the big group is coming so tomorrow morning we're starting wheels rolling at 5 30 so we need to be there at 5 30 already oh oh my gosh so it sounds like maybe you should rent an apartment or something no, no, it's not in Abu Dhabi. So that's a group ride. It happens here in Dubai. Oh, okay. No, but like, when you're uh, racing over and I'm... Ah, when we race, yeah. One of the ideas was let's buy the this house, uh, yeah. you know, this van, camper van or something like that. Yeah. yeah, that might be a good option. Yeah, just like have a bunch of rooms and everybody can stay at your place. Yeah. Pay the nightly fee. And oh my gosh, because that's a lot of weekends over there. Yeah, like a lot of... <laughs> nights at the hotels yeah so that's four morning races just yeah. to yeah because all the races the... Uh, you know it's a big difference compared to europe because i see that in europe in america the races are starting like in the lunch time or after lunch yeah. time here races are always starting like at seven o'clock in the morning or six o'clock in the morning and for that of course you you need to you need to stay somewhere close by so oh, the yeah, demand was the only difference because this is midweek race. It happened on mm -hmm. Tuesday every month, the first Tuesday of the month. Wow. And in, the, in the evening. So the rest is all like early bird race. Another thing relates to the races. Yeah. So closer to the end of the season, I was really lucky to go to a few of the UAE tour stages. The woman and men. Oh, very nice! I saw the sprint finish. Uh huh. And in Abu Dhabi, was very lucky. The UAE team came to Abu Dhabi in one of the cycling tracks for a visit, and I got this but bottle. That's not from the UAE tour. Oh wow! From UAE tour, but they came yeah. over, and I got it signed by Pagacher. <gasps> wow lucky you it's on the You'll shelf never use that bottle right <laughs> <laughs> never yeah proud possession put in a glass box that adds 12 20 watts to his bike if he put it there yeah <laughs> wow so what uh what next for this uh well i guess you're going into your hot season now for the summer but uh, you still stay fit how do you stay motivated martin like with all those so, racing, I know that you're young and 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 keen, but God comes, don't you get tired? Okay, Alex, do you get tired? <laughs> no, nah, I like it. I like it. It's really <laughs> something special. But uh, I have a great uh, athlete next to me, so he's keeping me pushing. He's got some good good routines for your racing, especially starting that early. For me, my motivation is all shown in this bottle. Oh. The UAE team and the world tour is my dream. So whenever I feel really, really tired, like, ah, uh, I just think of the facts of UAE team and that I need to keep pushing. Mm -hmm. That thought is like an energy booster and I just keep on going. It never really struck me that I want to quit or anything. I never thought of that. But of course, I have motivation, and my motivation is my dream. And I know that I want to push a lot, win races, and go up in ranks, mm -hmm. and then go to the world tour. 
Well, do you have that plan in place as to your steps? So now you're racing with U12. Then, you know, you got all those years until you get the juniors. And then uh, off to Europe you go. So do you have, are there teams locally that can support you moving up? Because that really requires, like, you really, well, you need the support system in, in those races and that team. Do you have, is yeah. that available? As as I will go up in ranks, I'm pretty sure that my team will be uh, supporting me mm -hmm. because for many races, my team is also there. So I have support. We have a tent uh, where I can get something. It's really nice to have the team around me. And as I go up, I'm planning to stay in Shafar mm -hmm. and I will stay there as, lo as long as I can. And then if I move up, I might go to the pro and then world tour cycling teams. But for now, it's focused mainly on the El Shafar. Yeah, of course. So are there a lot of kids your age, like and between like 10 and 15 that are actively um, racing? Like, is there, or is it very small, like a small uh, in your, uh, in like, in like locally? Uh, in Dubai, it's very rare to see kids out on the track. And oh, really? I'm very happy to see kids on the track. Um, yeah. That's in Abu Dhabi for the races. There are quite a lot kids, okay. um, my level and lower. And from 10 to 15, I would say there are quite a lot of kids. Mainly, I would say 80% of them from Abu Dhabi because Why? there are a lot of kids from the Abu Dhabi cycling team. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a good team. It's... Yeah a real team but mm -hmm. i of course i'm in shafar and i will stay in shafar but mm -hmm. what i like about that team it's they treat it really like a real team tactics and different things mm -hmm. they use that and that's very nice so i like that and i'm gonna yeah. keep going to races and yeah. race against them because i enjoy that well, it's good because you get to learn a lot. Um, and so why do you think that there's more kids in Abu Dhabi compared to where you are? How come? Well, the cycling is currently more focused in the Abu Dhabi because right. in Abu Dhabi, they have an island called Hudariyat that's where all mostly all of my races are okay. and they want to create Abu Dhabi as the home of cycling so they're uh -huh. focusing a lot over there and there are clubs um, with lots of kids there because the adults are also cyclists so why not send mm -hmm. them kids and the kids become stronger and stronger and on that island they're building a lot of stuff and it's really okay. starting to look like a home of cycling. They mm -hmm. have a, a road cycling track, a mountain bike, and they're building a velodrome. And in future, they may Whoa, be like a that's cool. Track. So that's very nice. And that's why I, I believe that the cycling is more focused in Abu Dhabi. Because in Dubai, we also have quite a lot of cycling tracks. But races over here is pretty rare and for kids there aren't any like at all up to the junior levels so up to 15 i would say there are no kids uh no races in, in here in dubai mm -hmm. and that's why we have to go to abu dhabi for, for all his races um and i would say after 15 so when this junior age starts there are some races also there are races with the um, uae cycling federation okay but martin is too young to even yeah. to try to join that because uh 
not like in Europe or America. I don't know how it is in America, by the way, but in Europe, I know that they have the, the, the kids starting from, I think, eight to 10. There is an age group like that. Yeah. So here in the UAE, they have limited that with the youngest age of 12. So oh, okay. to try to go into the federation level races, Martin still has two years. Yeah, so going to be training and racing in the closed uh, races, not the federation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The stronger get experience and then move up to the federation and junior level where I can use my experience and my power. And it's going to be very interesting when I move up. Wow, that is super exciting. I know here they have like right down a uh, very like minimum the bit. So that's like five, six, seven, eight. Mm -hmm. and they go up but there are very specific clubs that are just catered to kids um of that age and yeah so and then they have we really hope that within some time all of those things will develop but yeah. the time is running and he's growing so maybe by the time when those things will develop martin will be already somehow in the in the junior yeah. age he'll uh, become a coach on the on the uh, side yeah, while you race Maybe a team manager, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Depending on, on when those things are going to happen. Yeah. Well, it does. It does take a big uh, community of parents to yeah. end kids with interest to start. And then once people know about it, like they just, they sign their kids up and every year and, and they, and here they have, it's called the Jeux de Quebec. So it's just for kids of like so they do little um obstacle course timed obstacle course then they mm -hmm. have a crit then they have a time trial and then they have a road race it's not very long um and it's over the weekend so it's pretty cool like you get hundreds of kids out there um i i used to work i worked one or two events and uh it's pretty cool so it's all just just kids up to i think probably about 12 and mm. uh yeah yeah so that, that that could be really cool yes and we mm. we don't have that so the only kids races really where there are some kids is this falcon demand series in abu dhabi yeah. so we really hope that we are talking to some organizers because uh, they are getting in contact with martin for example sometimes through the social media as well mm -hmm. uh but then they realize that ah okay you're 10 all right we, we, we can't <laughs> Like, oh. So, and I spent some time <laughs> also talking to some of the organizers, explaining them that, that if you will keep on limiting uh, age by 14, 16, or whatever, you will never get. You'll never get kids. These 15 years olds will come to you. You need to start letting them go when they're 10, 12. So yeah. we really hope that within some time that that thing will develop. If anybody from Dubai listens to that, please <laughs> take a note. <laughs> Make a race. <laughs> yeah. Contact Alex. You... <laughs> well, that being said, I noticed that you have a little brother who's, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I didn't realize, like I did ask before, but I, I saw in some of your posts and, um, it looks like you will have a little, little brother looking up to you and you can mentor him and then you'll just have your own team. <laughs> Yeah, you've got his balance bike for the yeah. Year. He's already learning. He's already learning. He's two years old now, so he's learning how to do things. Yeah. Oh yeah, like that. That age is crazy when they start getting on bikes. And um, I don't know if you like you didn't talk mention it, but this isn't road. But you know those little um, uh, pump tracks. Where they mm -hmm. just up and I don't know if you have any there, but those little guys like we we do have, but they're a little bit too big for his age yet. Oh. But I, <laughs> I think he's gonna enjoy that soon, really, really soon, because yeah, at this age they are growing super fast and developing super mm -hmm. fast. Mm -hmm. the most important thing you've got even the jersey already. Yeah, <laughs> well, it looks like he, he has a proper he has a proper jersey, cycling jersey. Oh. Uh, well, Dad, you're gonna be busy with two of them. Hopefully, he'll have his license by the time. 
<laughs> the other one. Yeah, right. so it's like we're gonna have to buy a box of extra gels for him. Yeah. <laughs> I love the pose when you're on the rollers and you're holding the bottle. <laughs> that was the best. That was like, oh my God, he's got a little brother. So so I guess he comes with you and he watches you race, Martin? Uh, not really because not you know, really? <laughs> little kids and he might cry like, on the way and because it's a long way there and our car isn't that big to fit all of us. So it's just me, my dad, and my bike in the car. <laughs> the bikes. <laughs> cool. Oh, my God. So what else? Oh, hey, I have to ask you. Now, I noticed on your Instagram that you purchased the quad. Uh, no, the, um, yeah, the quad lock for your bike. Yeah. Um, that's a cool thing it's very yeah. i did some training today how do you like it amazing i personally recommend it to everyone especially for the indoor cycling um because mm. i used to have a towel and stretch the towel and put my phone over there so just so i can put my zwift companion now it's mm -hmm. way safer way better I just put it, uh, snap it on, and I have my Zwift companion, and it's perfectly working. I love it. So it's a very good thing. Because I was looking at it. It's in, like, I have it, like, I have it purchased. It's in a cart somewhere. And I know Chris Foom is, you know, their, their spokesperson, but I'm like, oh, I like to get the opinion from someone who I know who purchased it and uh, your personal opinion for yeah, writing. Very nice. So we have also, Martin is writing also on the on the MTB, not that much, but uh, at least- Oh yeah, mountain biking, you've been- Once in a while, too. sometimes on the mountain bike, but there we also have the, like a holder for the, uh, for the bike computer. But when he goes around the community and he's using his mountain bike, of course, not the road bike, so he can put his telephone over there and not for the sake of uh, training, but just to have a phone and it's securely locked over there. And it's a really cool thing. I, I, I really like it. Okay, good. I think I will buy it based on your recommendation. So I'm like, <laughs> oh, you, know, like, yeah. you just never know these days. Everything online. So yeah, tell us. Sometimes you don't see that, uh, but yeah, when when I touch that, really, uh, I can say that it really has a good quality plastic as well, because mm. we've seen a lot of things and we have tried a lot of things. So this one, you can say that really, it's, it's gonna last you a while. It, it's it's, it's gonna, gonna last, last, and yeah, it it, it looks like it. Yeah. Well, cool. So. How does your mom love all your cycling? She oh, make it out very, for any of your races? That's really interesting bike? because Martin is stealing me for all the weekends and everything. But I went for a couple of business trips. And uh, so my wife accompanied Martin to the couple of races, actually. And it was good. And then she also went to one of the finishes, one or two finishes. One. One, finish one finish of the UAE tour man and and then we were on the phone call and she said you know what I understood mm -hmm. why you spend your time on these races because <laughs> it, the energy on that place especially they were on this sprint finish so imagine the energy of the bunch sprint on the world tour yeah, yeah. it was something amazing really amazing wow so, that's good she, your mom's going she's there. Us. She's fully supporting us. And <laughs> yeah. Me and him are on a mission to get her into cycling, but we don't have... Yes, more it women on the way. bikes. It is on the way. It's slowly on the way. We've got we've got the MTB and she, she, she got herself the special saddle where she can put Leo, the, the, the young oh, brother. Oh, cool. 
So yeah, they're having already some road uh, community rides with the uh, MTB bike and Leo can sit over there as well. So one day we're going to be all four on the bikes. I can't wait to see that post. You better post it. <laughs> <laughs> there was a post actually. Me, Martin and Kate, my wife, we were on the road bikes. We had a small, small ride together. Oh. It is something new. I have to go look. That's <laughs> awesome. I know being um, a bike club owner myself, getting women on bike is super important or just encouraging more women to cycle. Are there a lot of women that ride? around? Yeah, it's, it's normal, like. It is, there, there, you, you can't say that there are more women than men. Oh, yeah. Maybe not even 50-50 so really? far. But, but it's not something like you can say that it's rare. No, we have a lot of women cycling and we have, again, in Abu Dhabi, for example, they have special days when they have um, only women rides on the track. They close the track completely because, you know, this is a Muslim country and sometimes you don't yeah. want to, to mix things up. Yeah. And so they close the track. It's once in a week. It's announced in advance and everything so that's totally fine and so they have a special rights only for women but also women of course riding with the men and some you know we went together with martin to the couple of races of the uae tour women which was also the first world mm. tour women uh in the in the region and that was crazy that was and it was super amazing and oh seeing wow all these girls racing over there and you can really say that for some man to say to him let you ride like a girl you know it's a, it will be a big like, thank you <laughs> so it's really great unfortunately not too many spectators so me and martin went to one of the uh, mountain stages and we climbed to the uh, to the finish on the bikes and we were only two cyclists on that finish. So oh. there were no other cyclists. And then when you look how the UAE tour man was at yeah. the finish, it was super crowded and everything. So that must be promoted. It's still yeah. uh, on the way, but it's pretty good. So for the women cycling, if I go out, um, probably tomorrow's group ride will be lots of women, lots of men. It's going to be a mix. So it's, as my dad said, it's not rare to have women cycling. So it's pretty promoted here. And that's good. Do you find the, um, like, the population of people in Dubai, is it very mixed? Like, with Americans, with Canadians, with Europeans? Yeah. Like, oh, it's... oh, yeah, it's a big pot. Is it? It's... Okay. <laughs> it's a big yeah, pot. Yeah, like... <laughs> If I, I might be wrong, but I, I, I think we have like 80 nationalities living in Dubai. Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, it, you, you better you better try to find somebody, some countries from where we don't have people here in Dubai. Oh. So we have people from all around the world. So somebody's celebrating St. Patrick's Day today. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got some Canadians or Europe, Europeans for sure. Wow. Well, that's like, super exciting. I'm really excited to to hear that your mom's um, going to be, I guess she's going to have to join you. She can't like, I mean, two sons in cycling. I I can see your, your younger brother is going to be there too. Um, just going to have to, yeah, everybody on bikes. So, yeah. well, that's, I mean, can you share anything that's going to come up for you? that's uh that's exciting this year we're trying to plan the uh, the summer holidays so maybe oh. we'll see somebody in europe so we don't know oh. exactly yet the locations we're still struggling to go through the um you know the paperwork and all of these regulation things um, to get Martin assigned to any of the kids' races in Europe. It is super difficult. Oh. So, yeah, because we are not UAE nationals, of course, and when you come mm -hmm. to Europe, 
you have to have this registration and you have to have this and that and most of the times it comes to the point that oh but everything is done in europe for the europeans to race over there but not for people from abroad to race there so but anyway we i think we already managed uh, a camp for a week so where martin will uh, exercise at least with the other boys and girls mm -hmm. in his age group somewhere in belgium oh and that'll be nice looking yeah. forward to find yeah. we still have time till summer so his vacation is july and august and so we'll try to find something else and yeah maybe come to canada well it's a little bit far but yeah maybe yeah. maybe <laughs> next time maybe you come <laughs> you come next winter you come to dubai there are many people actually exercising here and that's a good getaway point as well so you can you can cycle over here i'll be in australia next oh, christmas okay. no that's far but i won't that, be cycling it'll be more hiking and surfing okay. that's what oh, i'm gonna okay. do yeah <laughs> that's what we're gonna do but i want to thank you guys so much again for jumping on for this episode and this update i might just have to do this every year to see how just like watch your progress as you grow as an, a cycling athlete that's a super exciting for, for inviting us it was a great talk and i'm looking forward to the next year then oh me too cool thank you very much thank you thank you you're welcome you guys have a great day and we'll see you like have a great season thank you so much take care everyone hey. bye bye Bye. All right. Now that was super cool to bring Martin and Alex back. And uh, it is going to be super cool just watching the progress of that little guy making it to the world tour. So we've got another 10 years of podcasting to watch him in his growth as a young athlete in Dubai, making it and just sharing his passion. Oh my God, we need more people like that with cycling passion that young, 10 years old. I interviewed him, he was nine and uh, watching his brother um, come into his passion for cycling as well. And maybe even the development of cycling events in Dubai themselves. So with that, I hope you enjoyed that episode. And again, happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. Um, I know this isn't going to be out on St. Patrick's Day, but you can appreciate it that it was recorded on St. Patrick's Day. So um, with that, don't forget to follow, share, and also comment on the podcast providing your reviews and your thoughts on how you absolutely love it. <laughs> wink, wink. And when you go, we also are on YouTube. So if you like to watch and see our guests, that's a great place. Um, you can put your notifications on there and so you don't miss another episode. So take care, everyone. Have an amazing day and we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you so much for spending this time with me on the Secrets from the Saddle podcast, learning more about sighting people, places, and things that make cycling such an exciting sport. I am so glad you stopped by today. Please leave me a review if you feel so moved to do so. I would love to hear your feedback. And if you could take one second to share this episode with someone you think would enjoy it, I would be forever grateful. Also, if you could please leave me a review if you feel so moved by going to iTunes and leaving me an honest thought and an honest comment telling me what you think and most importantly, tell me what you'd like to hear more of. It would really help me to bring more great, inspiring cycling stories to you. Until then, have an amazing day. Make sure you ride your bike. And don't forget to visit my YouTube channel if you'd like to see the full version of this podcast live.